Wonderful. Welcome everyone to this information session on the ways in which Moreland University candidates and alumni can take advantage of this fantastic partnership with International Schools Services through the EDU Recruit platform. We're gonna wait as we welcome folks into our session today and give a, a few moments for people to, to enter, asking that folks would please mute themselves and uh, get ready for a really informative, exciting conversation. Welcome everybody. We'll wait a few more moments as we welcome folks into the conversation. Oh, and I'm excited. This is this is a Zoom meeting, not a webinar. So we get to see all these wonderful people and, and uh, inter interact with them. Welcome Yasmin, welcome Juan, welcome Arthur, Carol, Julie, Rafael, Elinda, Anita, Tun, Claudia, Bryson. Another Claudia, Ayoko. So grateful that you're with us today. Please introduce yourself in the chat space, telling us where you are in the world and what time it is for you. We know that people are joining us from around the globe. And so I'm interested in seeing maybe who had to get up the earliest or stay up the latest, depending on how you look at it. Six a.m. Juan, that would be horrible for me. I am not a morning person, so. Five a.m. All right. Yes. Five a.m. A couple of five a.m. folks. Twelve a.m. Yasmin. Ay. Maryland. All right, close to the home uh, of Moreland University's um, headquarters over in Washington, DC. I happen to be in San Diego, California, where it is 1 p.m. I'm in Portland, Oregon. It's also 1 p.m. Yep, <laughs> my West Coast friends. All right, everyone. Well, in honor of uh, the, the time commitment that you've brought to this and knowing how early it is for some and how late it is for others, I would be really grateful to get started with our conversation. Welcome to this information session where we will have an opportunity to discuss the ways in which the partnership between Moreland University and ISS, the International Schools Services Organization, benefits Moreland candidates and alumni through EDU Recruit. I have with me today two incredible innovators, Dana, uh, Dana Watts and Danielle View, who come to us from ISS as the experts on everything ISS, on the experts on the ways in which you all can leverage this partnership, and as frankly, uh, passionate and innovative international teachers. So I'm going to start our conversation today by, first of all, inviting everyone in the chat space to, as I said a few moments ago, introduce yourself in the chat space while keeping your mic muted to tell us where you are in the world. And if you've already done that and would like to share something else, tell us where you would like to teach, where you hope to go and become an international school teacher. The benefit of having Danielle and Dana with us is that they have extensive backgrounds, not only as teachers and leaders in international schools, but as supporters for of teachers who go abroad. They are the people you need to know as you prepare for your journey. And they are experts in the ways in which educators moving into the international sphere can receive the support that they need to be successful. So with that being said, I'd love to just start by having uh, Danielle and Dana introduce themselves. Danielle and Dana, why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about who you are and what brings you to the table today? Danielle, do you want me to share your slide? Sure. Okay. Hi, everybody. So happy that you're all here. Um, we do have some slides to help us um, bring you some of the information, but I mean, the main thing to know about Dana and I is that um, we got into international teaching um, many, many years ago, even if we don't look that old. Um, and we loved it so much, it changed our whole lives. And 
um, we just love sharing that with people and um, making sure that people know about this opportunity. So I spent time in um, at Brussels International School in Belgium. I spent time in Bogota, Colombia, and then in Luxembourg. And um, when I first moved over there, I moved over as a teacher and a half leadership position, and then eventually moved into leadership positions. I like to just show a few pictures of the schools because a lot of times when people think of international schools, they imagine things. They sometimes imagine inferior buildings or very, not very nice places. And I just want you to see the gorgeous, just gorgeous schools that I worked in. Um, and they're all different, but they all bring just unique, different qualities and are in very different locations. So just wanted you to get a sense of what some of the schools look like. Oh, and these are my people. So these are these are my kids um, when I brought them abroad um, to Bogota, Colombia. And, you know, one of the joys that I had besides traveling and meeting my husband abroad and my first international teaching gig was showing my kids the world. And that one of those pictures is in France and another one is in um, Bogota. So just to give you an idea, another um, advantage in this adventure, if you choose to join us. Thanks, Danielle. And hi, everyone. I'm Dana Watts. Um, I began my career teaching overseas, first in Bangkok, Thailand. Um, and then I moved um, from there to the American Embassy School in New Delhi, and then at Hong Kong International School in Hong Kong. And I'm currently located in Princeton. Um, and also, like Danielle, I like to show the schools. Um, this is the International School of Bangkok. And um, I absolutely love there. I used to drive around in a little hot pink uh, Vespa with a sidecar with my kids back and forth to school each day. It was super fun. Then I was at the American Embassy School in New Delhi, which was more like an Ivy League campus. Um, absolutely stunning campus, beautiful old brick buildings. Um, the greenery was um, beautiful. And then this is my most recent school. And this is just half the school. Um, this is Hong Kong International School. My office was I had one here and I had one right here that looked out on the bay and um you know the paddle borders and sailboats and water skiing that was happening here and the mountain ranges and this was um our high school and our middle school and then this is the athletic field which it, our athletics which they're actually now building some over here some of this is student uh teacher housing and then there was also some teacher housing way over here but that's just half our campus so i was in love with this campus um and i thought it was stunning i um, mean then these are my kids actually two years after we had moved overseas we're on the mekong delta here um, my daughter right here was only 18 months when we first went overseas so she's about three and a half here. Um, but this is them when we first started our journey. And then this is them at my oldest son's um, graduation from high school in Hong Kong. And um, now they're 24, 22, and 19. Um, but this was them back in 2018. And they've spent their entire academic career overseas. So we just kind of wanted to give you like some context of who we are and I personally, and I know Danielle as well, love teaching overseas. It is the smartest, best kept secret in education. And I'm so passionate about it. I wrote a tiny little book on it, but we love to help get more people involved with teaching overseas and helping you find the right fit. Well, that's a fantastic introduction because it helps us to recognize the context and the positionality that you bring to the conversation. You know what you're talking about. You have lived and served abroad. And now the work that you do with ISS helps teachers who want to have the journeys that you've had. Can you tell us a little bit about ISS, focusing on its mission, the core services that it offers, and the way that it supports educators globally? Sure. Um, I've got a super quick video um, that I'll play real quick. Um, and let's make sure the volume works because I'm not totally certain that it will. Uh, let's see. Can you hear that? Okay. Thank <laughs> you. 
So basically, there's kind of, I think of ISS kind of like a hand. So if you were to, um, like we start, we start up and manage schools, and then we do a bunch on recruitment, we either find school leaders, or teachers for schools. And then we also work with like, an kind of like Amazon for schools. For example, we have a school in Madagascar, and they can't get all their supplies to Madagascar and, you know, customs and all that kind of stuff. So we have a warehouse here in Princeton. We, they order all the stuff that they want. We box it all up in, in big shipping containers and make sure they get any school supplies. But it could not, it could also be like mattresses. <laughs> um, it could be like any kinds of anything that any school might need for their teachers or their students. Then if you think about it, like for accounting, this is kind of interesting because if you think about it in any of the international schools, you could have my last school had 46 different nationalities um, represented within our teaching staff. So within that, you can't like we pay the taxes and do all of the payments and um, um, make sure that everyone gets their salary in the, you know, the um, denomination that they need and things like that and help them take care of their taxes and all that. And then we run PD. So it's kind of like five different pieces. But basically, oh. ooh, I was not trying to play that again. Sorry. Um, but so anyway, we just try to help um, schools all over and um, figure out ways that we can work together to try to help them as they grow. Wow, Dana, that is so incredible. I honestly learn something new about what ISS does every time that we get together. And just a quick question, um, when was ISS founded? Oh, 68 years ago, I think. Yeah, I was going to say it's almost 70 years, years ago. ago. Oh my gosh. Well, the people in the room today are here because they're part of the Moreland University Network, where we teach teachers around the world to be resourceful problem solvers and tech savvy educators through an online collaborative activity-based learning system designed for tomorrow's students in a dynamic and diverse world. We help to certify, train and empower teachers as they seek to earn their US license, either here in the United States to teach in districts where we are partnered around the country, as well as in 165 countries. So the synergies between us are incredible. And it is obvious why Moreland international teachers, as well as Moreland US teachers who want to become international teachers would naturally come to ISS. Danielle, can you elaborate on the job opportunities facilitated by ISS for educators seeking international placements? And then Dana, uh, after we hear from Danielle, I would love for you to discuss the professional development initiatives at ISS and how they contribute to continuous growth for educators. Sure. So um, the recruitment side of ISS is actually um, when ISS started, that was the first service that we offered. 
And so just so you know, um, all those services that we offered have evolved over time and different schools utilize ISS for different things. But what we're really here today, you have um, recruitment and you have learning here today. Those are the two strands that we're really um, hoping to partner with you on. So for in terms of recruitment, um, we have a database, a very large database. It's called our EDU Recruit Platform, and it also has EDU Learn courses. Um, and in that platform, all of our schools that we work with post information about their schools. So there'll be salary information, um, hiring information, visa information, what are the benefits, information about the country. And then the exciting part, all of the jobs that are open at that in particular school. And um, what's wonderful about our database is that it is highly searchable. And what I mean by that is you can search by a region, you can search by a country, you can search by the type of job you're looking for, um, the opening time of the job, like when does the job start? Um, it's just very user-friendly for you to look for jobs, to communicate with schools and recruiters, and to also, um, guess what, apply for jobs. You can apply for jobs right in there and get responses from recruiters right in there. And right. all you have to do is develop a profile and um, start using the tool. And you can start engaging and learning more about international schools all over the world and the opportunities all over the world. Well, and, and before we hear from Dana, Danielle, I have had numerous opportunities to interact with you in person. And the last uh, job fair that we had together in New York City, I even saw some of the folks on our call today. I, <laughs> the Ashney, I was in conversation with a number of folks who Ashley. were there to search for potential roles and in-person events. Could you talk to us a little bit about the in-person uh, opportunities available for job seekers? Absolutely. Um, so every year, ISS holds a number of fairs. Of course, we did stop a few years during our COVID times um, and had virtual fairs, which was actually, we were one of the first companies to start virtual fairs way before uh, COVID happened. So we're really good at those too. Um, but our in-person events, we usually hold three to four events. Um, two of them are usually in very large cities in the States. So this year, for example, we held a fair in Atlanta and then in December, and then we held a fair in New York City just recently in um, February. Um, we also held an event in Bangkok uh, in October. And um, next year we plan on doing some similar, similar um, locations, except for I think we're gonna be in Washington DC next year. But it gives you an idea, three great opportunities and we really recommend in person if you're new to international teaching and international schools because the networking is invaluable. Mm -hmm. The Huge. number of recruiters you can talk to, if you've never done it before, it's really a great way to do it. Yes. And I, as a lover of professional development, have been honored to deliver professional development at both your Atlanta and your New York City uh, job fairs. And we are looking at the possibility of continuing that later this fall. But as a lover of professional development, I have to ask Dana, what is the the opportunity available to Moreland candidates for continuous growth through ISS? Sure. So part of the premium membership that you get is you get access to our professional learning all about recruitment. So we give you tips and tricks on how to present your best self, information that you need, um, how to negotiate a contract, how to rewrite a resume, things of that nature, and kind of the inside scoop on what there is about international schools. And I just want to say, like, you know, when I, I wish I had known, you know, when I was 20, that like things like this existed, because what's kind of nice about going through a recruitment agency is they're kind of the mediator to make sure you're not getting stuck at a crappy school. So, and literally like one of the things that we do is we only work with accredited schools. So they have to be accredited and 90% of the accreditation agencies that the international schools work with actually are out of the United States, but it means that they, you know, it's not a language school where they're going to take your passport and lock you in a hotel room and then you're going to be working 12 hours a day. Those things exist. Those do not exist with us at all. We screen the schools. We make sure they're good. We They have to have a reputation with us. 
but then we also can help advocate for you. So if a school does something, right, A, we get rid of them, but we also then can help you find another job. So it's kind of like that medium. And then the other thing I was going to say before we talk about PD is um, we love Moreland University. We do not right now partner with any other universities the way we partner with Moreland University. Um, I was lucky enough four or five years ago to be asked to audit a bunch of your courses. They are spot on. Moreland is getting you ready for what we need in the international schools. And so that is why we have such a close partnership with Moreland. Like I audited those courses and thought, wow, I wish I had known that this existed. And so it's really I'm like we know that you are solid candidates and we want to help you find positions and find the right school and environment that's safe and good for you and your and and your professional learning needs. Thank you Dana. Those are such kind words and when we met years ago I was in a session that you were delivering and you embarrassed me because I happened to say that I'm from Moreland and you said Moreland University. Oh my gosh, everybody should go to Moreland in front of all of these people in a session. So she means what she says and that's why we have this amazing opportunity. In the context of our new partnership, can you detail the collaborative efforts between Moreland and ISS aimed at enhancing the professional trajectories of international teachers? Sure, Danielle, do you want to take that? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Sorry about that. I thought we were talking more about professional development. Um, do you yeah. want to show your slides? Sure. Okay, I can do that. Give me one second. <laughs> Well, and as you're pulling those up, Dana, I think what we can do is also talk about the incredible professional development that ISS has as a part of this opportunity. And I would love for you to introduce us to all of the good professional development that's available in addition oh, sure. to all of that. All the so we have over a hundred courses in our um in our on our platform where we um we really try to help teachers be able to take courses just in time, you know, it's on demand or live with leading consultants around the world. We translate all of our professional development into um, 230, um, actually 232 uh, languages. Um, we make all the recordings available in different subtitles. And we also try to make sure that we're hitting all faculty and staff. So it's not just our educators in the building, but also our school management and operations, the business office, admissions, HR, our IAs, TAs, and every all our host country colleagues. So that's kind of, we do a la carte, like just one-off workshops. Dana, but then we, Dana, can you show them your slide that shows them the, what the platform looks like? Yeah, let me, uh, I gotta find it real quick. Okay. As Dana is pulling that up, I wanna be clear that when we came together for this partnership, we included a lot of different considerations for the needs of our international teachers. And those are encompassed by both what Dana and Danielle bring to the table around recruitment, as well as professional development and learning. One of the things, Joey, that I think we both believe in and is also a synergy between our two organizations is that we believe strongly that professional learning is um, is a key to retention for educators. And we see such a um, shortage of teachers right now and people not wanting to go into the field. And we know that that support either before you start, and that's why we love Moreland because they're get, doing such a great job preparing teachers, but also after you're in the field, we are trying to help educators stay in the field through the professional learning that we offer. Just briefly, here's our platform. And um, so in here, we have a multitude of different courses on creativity and innovation, diversity, equity, inclusion, management and operations. Then we have courses where you can do some certifications in like special education or environmental and things of that nature. Then we have a whole list of courses that are available to you for free um, at, at, um, as part of um, being members of ISS at, for recruitment, and then obviously teaching and learning and women in leadership. Um, under creativity and innovation, we're really looking at and we keep hosting more and more courses specifically about AI and the impact of um, artificial intelligence within our classrooms and what that might look like and things of that nature. And then these are actually all tied in. Like if you were to take a course in here and you were to take a course, say, on resume writing and things of that nature, 
You also then earn these badges that are aligned with your portfolio on our recruitment side of things. So if you, so then um, any recruiters are seeing all the professional learning that you're doing and how you're um, and how you're um, enhancing your your own professional self um, and and your career and the things that you're most interested in. And all of those, just to be clear, with the premium membership that we're going to offer Moreland student universities and alumni, um, all those courses that you just saw under recruitment um, with all those price tags, all of those are free to you. Whoa. So those are all included, which is amazing. I got ahead of myself, I think. When I asked <laughs> the question a moment ago, we needed to hear that before we could talk about the benefits because Dana's incredible work organizing and preparing and even teaching a lot of that professional development is an incredible benefit to our partnership. So with that being said, right. I'd love to ask you to talk to us a little bit about the collaborative efforts that we have and this new partnership. Sure. So um, our premium membership is um, typically $75. We try to be really affordable for teachers, obviously. Um, and with the $75 fee, um, you would get access to the portal, you get access to all the information that we have there, you get access to um, to be able to contact and communicate with recruiters, as well as apply for jobs. Um, we offer personalized support. So our whole team offers, um, we have something called office hours. So if you need help with anything, we have specific times when you can come and meet with us. We also meet with you whenever, um, if you cannot make those hours at other times. we, I would say at ISS, we specialize in um, being very supportive of our teachers. We really wanna help you find the best fit. Um, and besides all of that, we offer our recruitment courses for you, uh, for free, if you um, are a premium member. But instead of paying $75, this sounds like a commercial. <laughs> we, we have a code for you we're going to give you at the end because we would be so excited for you to join us and try us out. And um, we'd love to have the type of uh, quality of candidates that we know are coming from Moreland available to these amazing schools that we support. Wow. Dana, would you add anything else? to uh, help folks understand a little bit more about the collaboration and the opportunities available to them? Yes, there is more that I didn't say. Oh, um, so yeah. the other thing anyway. that's included in the, in the premium membership is you can attend all the events. So ah. you can go to any of the in-person fairs, you don't have to pay an extra fee and you can go to any of our iFairs and there's usually four to five of them a year where you can just jump online with hundreds of schools that have jobs. Um, and of course the in-person ones, um, candidates and recruiters pay for hotel and transportation, but we do not charge you to come to the fair if you're a premium member. So all of that's included with your Moreland membership and our collaboration together. Wow. So this um, is an example. Yeah, go for yeah, it. This is an example of the um, ED recruit side of the platform. So all of this lives in the same tool. It's like a resource. And in here, um, this is where you would see, um, for example, a recruiter going in and looking specifically for a candidate, a mathematics candidate who has calculus experience and this sort of age range. And it'll pop up a whole bunch of teachers. And then there's more information that they can see in your profile. It's really important um, when you create a profile, create a free profile and make sure that you put as much information as you can because schools are looking for you to have that completed profile to really be able to um, find out who you are. And you have a better chance of getting an interview, getting a response if you have a lot of information in your profile. Right. Um, and, you know, Melissa asked a question in the chat. Do you need two years experience? stateside before you go overseas. I think that it has changed dramatically over the past couple of years. So before, back in the day when I first started teaching overseas, you needed a ton of experience, you needed a master's degree, you needed blah, 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 blah. Well, there is a global teacher shortage around the world right now. So uh, if 
the evidence of the past two years and our recruitment fairs have say anything, you are going to walk away with job offers. And like last, last week we had, when we had a recruitment fair, I had said to the, to the group of um, candidates who were there, I said, okay, so last, you know, in Atlanta, one couple had seven offers. I'm like, mm -hmm. and so this other couple's like, we're going to beat them. And I think they had seven or eight at the end of offers of places to go because really our schools need you and teaching i mean teaching is such a wonderful profession but we know that it's super polarizing and divisive right now in certain countries and in certain states right and so we're just trying we don't want to lose your passion for teaching teaching overseas they treat you well i had my housing paid for i had pd paid for i got to travel all over the place i loved it so i think that there's opportunities like now it's it, like the ball's in your court right well and dana there's a great question in the chat space i'd love you to speak to dana or danielle um we have a number of folks who are here who are current candidates who are working toward getting their teaching license they may have had years of experience teaching but they may not yet have their license can they still potentially find a job through EDU Recruit um, as they're working toward their license? Um, to, again, like Dana was saying, the, the field and rules have changed a little bit, but generally schools will look for um, a teacher to have a license um, and a completed degree. However, um, and we experienced that even just at our last job fair, it, it was, um, there were uh, some people who got some offers who hadn't finished their Moreland certification yet, but we, they knew that they were about to. Um, well, because international schools, first of all, they know the caliber of ISS and its uh, network. They know the caliber of Moreland graduates and the work that we do. And so while it is usually required to have that license, knowing that you're coming from ISS and through Moreland University certification program as you're on your journey, there is absolutely possibilities. And I say, why not try, right? Yeah, of course, yeah. So, I mean, we, we've had people who have the license and the certification, but haven't actually started teaching yet. And there are plenty of opportunities for people who are new to the field. And some people will say, well, should I start in the States and then go overseas? And, and I always say to them, as a first year teacher, it's really hard no matter where you start. But imagine starting in like a really well-resourced school that has really excellent supports for their teachers. Um, and I'm not saying that might not happen in the States, but overseas, generally in a lot of these international schools, they just have smaller class sizes and lots of professional learning and things that make it a lot easier actually to be a first year teacher. So right. some schools want that experience, but there's a lot of schools that like to take recently graduated um, students. So it also I depends. Have, on, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I think it also depends on what you're teaching, right? Like I had someone looking. Um, what was that candidate who walked in on the last day on Sunday? Was she AP Bio and Chem? She oh was gosh. Bio Chem and Physics. <laughs> she was so this woman was flying in from Nigeria, yeah. and she taught AP Bio Chem and Physics. And she walked in and there were two hours left of the fair. Like everyone had packed up. They thought like we were done. And so we put out a note to all the schools saying, okay, we've got someone who's willing, who has these qualifications and is interested in teaching this. And we had a laundry list of schools waiting and lining up to interview this candidate because it depends on the position and how hard it is to, fo to fill. So that helps as well. And then I also noticed um, the question about being a Spanish teacher. Oh my gosh, yes. Like the more languages you speak, the better. Um, but as a Spanish teacher, 100%. Um, almost every school I've taught at had a Spanish program. Now, and I taught in India and in Thailand and in Hong Kong, and they had Spanish. That, so that's super helpful. Um, and people need you. Music teachers are hard to find. Like the more specialized you are, the more in demand you are. So a music teacher, 100%. They're dying to find you. There were two teachers. music positions at the last fair. Yeah. 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 So I see that we're going to have some great Q&A, but in order to honor the, the start and end time that we have on the calendar, I want to pause here and just ask, Danielle, Dana, what are the concrete next steps for Moreland candidates to access this new ISS 
EDU recruit platform to get their membership started and to take full advantage of the collaborative opportunity in front of them. Um, Dana, I don't know if you could just put up the last slide just because I, I hear some things, but I'm better if I like see it also. I am exactly. <laughs> the so, same so that you don't forget. Um, so if you, to get started, all you have to do is go to our website. Um, it's iss.edu. Um, and Dana, I can't see anything on your screen. Can other people? I'm not sure. You can't see that? I can't see. It Did it's you both see it? I was overheating from the way the sun was coming in my window <laughs> and so I had to move. And so everything got wiggled around. Um, it's just, I guess it's a hot day out. Um, not really, it's freezing. But so I'll pull it up in just one second. Let me try one more time here. Uh, okay. So it froze. So I apologize for that. So I'll try again. Here we go. So when you, so I'll keep talking when you, oh, here we go. So when you get to the website, you are um, going to create a free profile. And once you create that free pro profile, you can upgrade to premium. And that's when it's going to ask you to pay the $75. And that's when you're going to put in the free code for Moreland. And it's Moreland 2024. Um, a capital M, da Danielle? Yeah, it is case sensitive. So you do need to worry about that for the Moreland 2024. Make sure that the M is capitalized. And um, Joey... Um, where else could they find this if they forget this or they don't um, they don't see this amazing webinar? Well, we're going to share also some resources via email so that folks can take a look at the um, opportunity as a follow up with the recording of this. But also on our blog, we have a blog post where folks can uh, get information on, on how to sign up. So I'm gonna put in the chat space, a link to our blog post, which gives you step-by-step -step instructions to sign up. Excellent, thank you. You're welcome. This is fabulous. Well, on behalf of Moreland University, I would like to say thank you to Dana and Danielle. We are honored to continue this partnership and the conversation that started in Guatemala um, is just going to continue, Dana, as we expand and, and support as many teachers as possible. Before we officially end, I would love to offer a Q&A session whereby any important teach, uh, teacher's questions in the chat space might lead us through a couple of uh, meaningful moments of, of wrap up. So <clears throat> I'm going to just go through and read a couple of the questions. Um, Julia asks, to be strong candidates, how many references do we need? We uh, recommend that you have at least three. Our references are generally tied to your work history um, and you're gonna have stronger references if they're supervisors. There are some people who will list um, a colleague and that might be a red flag for recruiters. So um, always try to list um, somebody who is in a supervisory role for you. What about their Moreland professor, the person who was in charge of supervising and analyzing their clinical practice in particular? That would be excellent. That's an excellent uh, reference for and sure. Lots of Moreland professors from whom to select. Yes, great. The code Other. gives you premium access, right? Am I correct about that? Yes. Mm -hmm. So you sign up for the premium membership, the one that would require you to pay money. What about Mandarin teachers and other foreign language teachers? Oh, oh my gosh. Mandarin teachers are so in need. And again, there was Mandarin in both India and Hong Kong, but finding good Mandarin teachers, it's hard, hard to find really good Mandarin teachers. And so depending on where you're from, like it can be really difficult to find, like uh, so many schools offer Mandarin as an additional language and they struggle to find teachers. Yes, yes. I think we can uh, end our session with one more question. And this is a great one. Um, Juan asks, do you have any tips for recent graduates from Moreland who might not have direct K-12 teaching experience except for their clinical practice? What references could be used if they don't have K-12 experience yet? 
I think you definitely would want to um, utilize your clinical experience as part of your um, part of your package, part of your information, and also part of your references. References also, as we just mentioned, could be your university professors who are familiar with your work. Um, and if you happen to be a career switcher and have other other work history that you have some great references from there, those are also, we encourage you to include those if you don't have the K through 12 background yet. Dana, would you add anything to that? No, but I was just looking at, um, Yasmin asked, you know, what do we have equal opportunities as non-native speakers? And I would say yes. And if you, we have, are doing a lot of re-education. I don't know if that's really the right way to say it, of recruiters. They used to say you needed to be a native English speaker. That is that is just so wrong. Like who even knows what a native English speaker is, right? And, and only cert from certain countries or certain passports. So we've been working a lot with recruiters in schools. And that's some, a lot of the professional development that we do to help train them so that they understand understand that it's about competencies and we want our student our faculty and staff to represent the same students that we teach so we should have people from all different languages in all different countries always on our staff and if they don't then they, then they need to you know we, we talk to them and work with them about different ways and different hiring practices and looking at their hiring practices fantastic well this is great information. And I know that folks are gonna have more questions. So what I would encourage you to do is to be on the lookout for an email from me. I am going to include specific instructions on how you can access. And I encourage you to engage in some professional learning on recruitment and uh, sort of the, the international world of job seeking that's available through EDU Recruit and the uh, new platform. Thank you, Dana. Thank you, Danielle. And thank you to everyone who's been with us and who's decided to stay with us a few extra minutes as we've done this Q&A. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And I can't wait to see you on the other side of your enrollment in ISS. Take good care, everyone. Bye-bye. Good luck in your efforts. Good luck. Thank you. Bye. Bye.